So it seems like every time we every time we get on a high note, the enemy just kind of tries to jump back in again. But anyway, soon as he flees, and we call on the name of Jesus, and the enemy flees, he's waiting for another opportune time to come back and try to work on us. Try to throw thoughts in our minds. Try to do so many things. But we have to remember that God is a God of truth. And we are not, we will not be blinded by the things of the enemy. The enemy cannot fulfill anything that he says he wants to do in our life. He will try to come to us. He will try to tell us what he can do for us just like he did for, for Jesus. He'll say, Jesus, trust me. I got power. If you if you got all the power you say you have, I want you to jump off of there. You know what? God not going to have us committing no suicide. We know it does happen, but it's not going to be because of God. It's going to be because of the situation that we may be in. It could just be because of the state, the state of mind that a person has. But God isn't going to have us doing anything bad, anything negative, anything contrary, anything that doesn't align with the word of God. If we find ourselves doing it, we better not lie and say, God told us. And then again, I like to say, I don't even want to tell people God told me. Because what if... I go forward and I say, God told me, as we've heard, God told me that the world is going to end on such and such a day. And he sent me as a prophetic voice to tell people this. Now, that day is going to come and it's not going to happen. And I'm not going to look like no fool as some have done. And plus the word of God says, when he comes back, no man knows the day nor the hour. So all I need to do is make sure that I'm in right alignment so whenever God comes back, he can say, well done, my good and faithful servant, end to end. So we have to be really, really mindful that the devil has a job. His job is to deceive a God's people. But the scripture says in Revelation 20.10, And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur where the beast and the false prophet have been thrown, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. See, there's an end to this thing, people. I, you know, like people talk about being left behind. I'm not going to be left behind. I'm going to have my place in glory with the Father. But if we don't live the way that God wants us to, and if we become prideful, then God may look at us and say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I don't know you. Whatever you did, you did it in somebody's name, but you didn't do it in my name. You did it in the name of the devil. You did it in the name of one of his dem demonic forces. You did it in the name of a beast. You did it in the name of a false prophet, but you didn't do it in my name. So we want to make sure that we align ourselves with the things of of God because there are false prophecies going forward and if we don't know what the word of God says we can easily fall into those things um there was there's a preacher who a pastor who said if Christians don't vote for for Trump for president um God is not pleased with them that's foolishness why would God be upset with us about who we vote for when he gave us a free will to vote for who we choose? So, people better be very careful what they're putting out in the atmosphere in God's name, which is not true. But what I, what I can say is the election has actually shown us how easily People who claim they serve God can step away from godly things and accept things that don't align with the way of God. We have to remember God is loving. God is patient. God is kind. 
And even though we know there will never be a candidate for president who will be 100% of what we want, we still have to look to the character of the man and the woman. We have to look to the values of the man and the woman. We have to seek God for direction in making a right choice. But God isn't going to you know, people say, well, I'm going to go and I'm going to pray about it. You know what? God already gave you a, a, a free will. And you know what the word of God says. So we know what characteristics we should be looking for in someone who's going um, to be president of the United States. And I will not say that if I don't vote for one, then I'm choosing the lesser of two evils. I'm not going to believe that. I can't believe that because I'm trusting God. I am trusting God that God is bigger than any situation that is going on in this world. Remember, we serve a God who sits high, looks low, sees everything, and he will intervene if and when he so chooses. And a lot of times things happen and God is sitting up there saying, I'm not even focused about who's the president. I'm focused on how are my servants acting during this time? What are my servants saying? How are they responding to what they're reading? What are they putting out on Facebook? What are they putting out on the atmosphere? And he's looking at us individually to see, are we in alignment with the things of God? Or are we caught up into a lot of this sensationalism that is out here? So there are going to be false philosophies. There are going to be false religions. There are going to be some sheep. Some wolves dressed up in sheep's clothing. There are going to be a lot of false preachers. And we're going to see a lot of them coming to the forefront in this season. But God needs them to come to the forefront so we can see what they're really about. And see, this is the thing. Just because somebody preaches or teaches a strong and an eloquent message does not mean they have a right relationship with the Lord. And the word of God says, the fruit that we bear, the characteristics that we exemplify, show who we are in alignment with. So there's a lot of false doctrine going around. Um, there are even false disciples. Teaching things other than what the word of God says. Changing some things to make what they want to go forward. But the word of God is not going to change just because someone wants to write another little book and align it with it. It's not going to change just because the societal norm has shifted that this particular thing is now okay. It's still not okay with God. But because of people's free wills, they can do what they so choose. But still, we will all still stand and give an account for ourselves. So there are even false morals out there. So we have to pay attention to these things. And see, here's the thing. If we don't know what the word of God says, then we will fall for anything. And so Satan attacks. He attacks by trying to deceive. He wants to deceive people. He wants to destroy life. He wants to persecute us any way possible. And so... He's tainting the ministry of many people that say they are followers of God through this election. But let us stand and be true to who we are in Christ Jesus. He is promoting a lot of schisms in the body of believers. It's not the, the, the Lord doing it. It's the enemy. It's like, oh yeah, this is my opportunity. We got these two sides here. And then we got another one trying to jump in. So we have we have the Democrats and we have the Republicans. And now we have the um, evangelical trying to jump in. And, and the evangelical are supposed to be those who claim they have a relationship with the Lord. And they're prop, prop, um um preaching the word of god and and bringing it forth in such a dynamic way that's who we're that's who i'm mainly looking at what are they saying this truth and what are they saying that's just themselves what are they saying that aligns with the word of god or what are they saying that just 
sounds good based on this candidate they are trying to support. We have to be very careful in how we're moving about with what's going on. So the devil will try to plan doubt in our minds about what's going on. But we're going to trust God. We're going to trust God because he's bigger than every situation, every circumstance, everything that's going on. God is bigger than it. He's going to try to create, um, provoke people to sin more. And if we're not careful in the things that we write on Facebook, we will fall right into it. We'll fall right into that foolishness, which makes the devil so happy, so pleased, and saddens our Father in heaven, and grieves the Holy Spirit. So that's what we have to be mindful of. And just, and I want you to pray about this, because there are even more cults and secular groups coming up, claiming that they... Uh, serve God but they are not serving the G-O-D <laughs> that we serve and so they're coming up with all kinds of different things and the sad thing is there's so many people being pushed away from some of the things that are going on in a lot of these church and edifices that guess what this gives fuel for these groups that are coming up to say things that sound good to people who feel disenfranchised by biblical principles and so we need to continue to be a right example, to be positive, to be an example that exemplifies the things of God. All right, so that's my time right there. But I just wanted to let you all know that, you know, God is, God is in control. God is in control. Think about that. Whose report are you going to believe? I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. I'm going to believe God's report. Yes, we need to all repent from whatever ways that don't align with the things of God. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this study on tonight, Lord God. For Lord, you know I didn't know where it was going to go. But I thank you for the... The meat that you laid before us, Lord God. I thank you for the scriptures that we can go back and read, Lord God. And we can study, Lord God. And then we will have a better understanding of what you are sharing with us, Lord God. We want to thank you right now, Lord God. For you, Lord God. Keep on proving yourself over and over and over again. Over and over and over again. You keep proving yourself, Lord. And I want to say thank you. For victory is yours, Lord God. You already won the victory. And we want to thank you right now. Thank you right now. For victory is ours. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Bless you all. Thank you, Lord, for everything. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bless you. Say, if you're on the Lord's side, get up. Yeah, I'm on the Lord's side. Love you all.